You're watching our Dallas Cowboys mailbag here at the Cowboys Report. First up from John, yeah, I knew it was going to happen. Sign OBJ if he gets cut, but why? Uh, is he better than Amari Cooper right now? No. Is he better than CeeDee Lamb? No. Is he better than Michael Gallup? Don't think so. Is he better than Cedric Wilson? I mean, probably, but also, eh about that one obj doesn't make any sense for the cowboys they have receivers and let's be honest pretty clear he's become a locker room issue in dallas or in cleveland you don't need to bring that in right now so it's an easy no for obj from joe zapp and then i want to get to Dwayne's super chat here uh where does neville gallimore and d law stand on their return and will boss man fat get some reps over anthony brown i'd be a bit surprised if uh, Boss Man Fat got reps against Anthony Brown, or because Brown's been actually pretty solid outside of week one. Now, maybe if it's a blowout, they can work Boss Man Fat in. He got reps over Nashawn Wright when Diggs got hurt, but I think, I think we're a bit further away from Boss Man taking over for AB. Galmore, seems like that recovery's taken a bit longer than maybe initially hoped. Seems like Tank Lawrence, though, a bit ahead of schedule. Not this week, I don't think, for either guy. Cowboys have taken a week of practice, then return, because they've been able to be patient with all of their injuries. Michael Gallup, a great example of that, who I think might be back this week. We'll see. I, I wouldn't be stunned if Tank Lawrence came back by the midpoint of the month, before Thanksgiving is my hope for both of those guys. Super chat now from Dwayne Jackson. With back injuries being so what, being a medium-level threat, if the Cowboys then don't have to get the number one seed... And knowing Dak has been banged up this year, is it wise to sit him in your starters? Um, I'm not entirely sure what your question here is. Um, you should go for the number one seed. That is the best path to winning a Super Bowl. That is the route I would go if I were Dallas because that bye late in the season is very helpful for you. Now, if you get to week 16, week 17, week 18, and you're locked into your seating... I, I, I don't mind sitting some players at that point and resting your guys, but I think this is the NFL. You stole a win last week. Make sure you keep trying to, you know, win football games. From Thad Katzel, who couldn't even spell his own name right. What an embarrassment. Uh, I'm kidding. Thank you for watching, Thad. Given the way Cooper Rush played, would you sit Dak again? Look, Rush was very impressive. I think he exceeded pretty much everybody's expectations against the Minnesota Vikings. But I also want to mention this part. How would we be feeling right now, Wednesday, November 3rd live, if on that a miracle catch by Amari Cooper that bounced off the chest of the defender and into Cooper's arm because it wasn't quite a perfect throw, how would we be feeling about Cooper Rush? We would be concerned. I would have a lot of questions right now about trading for, or having traded for Andy Dalton or something along those lines. So yes, Rush overall played well. 325, two TDs, one INT. But if that, that vertical shot, if Cooper doesn't come down with that, I don't know if the Cowboys win that game. And because of that, I think we have to acknowledge the, what I consider the reality of the situation. Maybe you disagree, with it and that's all good. The Cowboys stole that game against Minnesota. You don't give one back against Denver or Atlanta or whomstever. If Dak is healthy, he plays. We, we, we all watched the warm-up drill. Dak looked just fine out there in terms of being able to play and being out there and working through stuff. And I think if the Cowboys were in a race for the NFC East, I think he would have played. The, the Cowboys now said, we don't want to allow this to linger. As long as he's cleared, play him. That is the route I would go if I were the Cowboys. But I want to make this an open and safe space for you guys to sign off and, ch and chime in as well. Do you want Dak to start this week? Type Y for yes or N for no. Raven Ruiz with Michael Gallup coming back. Will we see him take more snaps than Cedric Wilson? Um, I think this is a, a pretty likely outcome here. We'll get to the Super Chats, by the way, as well. Um, I think that they will probably bring Gallup along a little bit slowly, kind of like what they did with Donovan Wilson. But yeah, Gallup, I think, will take back the wide receiver three role. From Jason Shell, what are your midseason award winners like MVP, etc.? Uh, as it relates to the Cowboys, look, your MVP's Dak. Your defensive player of the year is Trevon Diggs. Your defensive rookie of the year is uh, Micah Parsons. And oh, by the way, all three of those guys 
could very well win the respective NFL awards as well. Most uh or most improved player. Hmm. Terrence Steele. Terrence Steele. Uh biggest surprise? How about Jerron Curse? He's been really nice find by Dallas. Uh, from Dwayne Jackson now. If Cooper rushes the starter until Dak comes back, how much faith do you have in quarterback three if Rush goes down? Uh, I mean, we haven't seen any of Will Greer. He hasn't been good in the NFL. Who knows? Um, I would prefer to not have that conversation uh, because that means there's a lot of issues at the quarterback spot if you're playing quarterback three. All right, from Alakai Trimble, as good as our defense has been, uh, we, we've, we're still missing some pieces. How damn excited are you to see what it looks like at 100%? I'm very excited. Like, this, this Cowboys team has been winning games without, a, without quarterback one for one of them. They lost left tackle one for a game. Right tackle one missed five games. They've missed a lot. Defensive tackle one has been out. Edge one has been out. The Cowboys of years past are not where they're at. So I am very excited to see what they're able to do. I had tried to urge caution of let's not, set, let's not set our expectations too high. And here they are, exceeding the expectations. The answer is very. From, uh, from the trash man, uh, hashtag Cowboys for the Cowboys called about Von Miller. Why didn't they do the deal with the Rams did? Um, I think of the main reason why here is it's expensive. Um, Two seconds and or a second and a third is, is a lot to give up for Vaughn Miller. Even though the Broncos ate that money, that's a rental. Now, we can have the conversation about bringing Vaughn Miller in again in the offseason when he's a free agent, but I don't think Dallas was ever going to offer a second and a third for a rental player. They're not as aggressive, right or wrong, as the Rams are. But what do you guys think? Would you have done the Vaughn Miller trade? A second and a third for half a season of Von Miller, admittedly at a rather cheap cost. Get those votes in. D for deal and D for no deal. If you guys want more questions answered, if we don't get to them live on today's mailbag, hit me up on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny. We'll put that link in the comments section for you guys. Any questions you got, hit me up on my Twitter. Super chat now from XX King Snow XX. Do you think Cedric Wilson takes Gallup's spot on the, the roster? Well, remember, guys, Wilson is also a free agent after this year. And although I, there's really no way, unless you're dumping Amari Cooper, which I really don't want to do, guys, to bring back Wilson and Gallup. And that's even beyond this upcoming year. So I think that Gallup takes back over for Wilson. I think they will rotate their receivers, as they often do. But ah, it's a tough discussion for the offseason. I think Wilson would be cheaper but I think the Cowboys have missed a little bit of Gallup's deep threat ability this year. Uh, from Chiftel Garcia, however you pronounce it, I'm terribly sorry, but thank you very much for the super chat. Chris Wise now, who will be our best fit for Kellen Moore as a replacement if he becomes head coach next year, if he becomes our head coach, McCarthy out? I think the most likely outcome is Doug Nussmeyer takes over as your offensive coordinator. Um, Nuss and Dak, I think, have a pretty good relationship, not as good as Kellen and Dak, but... It's one of those, hey, it's working right now. Let's just promote the next guy up. And, you know, maybe it ends up not working, but that probably makes more sense than going out of the position. Or maybe McCarthy takes over play calling. That's certainly an option. From Ellis Grzynko, the Broncos scare me out of the 2013-2017 games. It's been what, since 1995, 96? Last time Denver won a, or the Cowboys beat a, uh, a Denver Broncos team. I understand your uh, your residual scarring. It makes sense. I have been burned. God, 2017 was a disaster. 2013 was, was hurtful because the defense blew it and somehow they blamed Romo. Anyway, um, I, I get it. Denver team isn't quite that. This current Denver team isn't that old at Denver team. From Allen, Tom, if I remember you saying the Cowboys will finish 10-7 and seven this year, do you feel the same way or not? That was my prediction. Uh, no. Uh, I do not feel the same way. Uh, I think this team has a very real chance at 13 or 14 wins. The schedule is not that hard. They beat the Chargers, a game I was worried about. Other games down the stretch don't look as challenging as they did earlier this year. Arizona looks tougher. Uh, what you might end up seeing if it's maybe 13 or 14 wins might come down to what the situation looks like in Week 17. If, or Week 18, that's a game worth playing for. 
But no, I think I was wrong. I think I was far too low on this Cowboys team, and I am very glad to be wrong on that one. If you guys want free Cowboys videos all year long, hit that big red button and subscribe. Free videos for you on the Dallas Cowboys report every single day as we have more subscribers than the actual Broncos. You can have more and more on that later. Subscribe, folks, if you want it all for free. From Sakura Yumi, want, want to bet that Trevon Diggs gets 10 INTs this year? Uh, no, I, I do not want that bet. Now, if you had told me at the beginning of the year, I said, yes, I'll take that bet, bet I'd be a happy camper if he got five. Hey, he's already got seven, so it's a good thing in the end, but no, I don't want to take that bet because I, I think he, he does. All right, from Justin, do you think the Cowboys should have made a trade before the deadline or sit tight with what we have? There weren't that many players dealt. You know, I, I would have looked into getting maybe Melvin Ingram, maybe dumping someone like a an Armstrong or a Kamara as well. Like I would have been open to that. But you're getting back Gallup and Lawrence and Hill and maybe Hill and Gallimore and, and other players. So your reinforcements are coming from your your roster, and that's a good sign for Dallas. So I, I put it this way: I would not have been mad. I would have been very excited, but I'm not heartbroken that they didn't either. From Delunatic, we re-signing Green Dot Curse. He's balling. Man, Jerron Curse has been on fire so far for this Dallas Cowboys team. I I actually like making safeties the Green Dot. A, because I love safeties, but it's kind of more of a Brandon Staley, Vic Fangio thing. I think it's smart. Um, they're not going to re-sign him right now. Let's see how the rest of the year goes in the offseason. Because Curse, this is his uh, chance to cash in. He'll probably take the biggest deal he gets because this is his first real opportunity to get big time, potentially big time, NFL money. From Cowboys R number one, bring back Mike White or trade for Zach Wilson. I, I always appreciate Cowboys R number one. He has some fun in the comments. Um, don't fall for the cheese for Mike White. Yes, he threw for 400 yards. His A dot was like four or less, which means they were checkdowns. Yeah, it's, it's not really repeatable. Don't boo me, Jeremy. I'm right. I'm sorry. Good for Mike White. I'm very happy for him. Uh, Zach Wilson trade. Yeah, if the Jets give him away for free, let's ride. But I don't think they're that stupid. All right, from Chris Wise here. Do you think Jerry would have the guts to fire McCarthy and put Kellen Moore as head coach? I'll mention this again. Um, that's a future Tom problem. There's, and I got plenty of those in my own life. But... Let's see how December and January and February potentially go. You know, if they collapse in the postseason because McCarthy makes a bad decision, it's possible. But, like, if they win the Super Bowl, you, you might not be able to. So let's check in and see where things sit once the year's actually over. From Gregory, uh, first of all, you can you – can, you, man, for bringing this question up, uh, Trace. Do you think Dallas should draft a kicker – in the third or fourth round of this next draft, like Gabe Brrrr or out of Oklahoma or Cade York, I refuse to spell kickers' names or pronounce their names correctly, whatever his name is. Where's Sam at? Hey, Sam, how do you pronounce the kicker's name for Oklahoma? Burkich? All right, I guess that makes sense. He's missing some vowels in his name. Um, and I'm sure he's a good kid. Uh, absolutely not. Why would I draft a kicker in the third or fourth round? That's silly. I don't want to spend a premium pick on a kicker because I'm not sure they're – oh, don't boo me, Jeremy. If you, you can get those guys undrafted or in round seven, you should never, ever draft a kicker before that because guess what happens? End up being Roberto Aguayo, and they stink. 